Hi everybody and welcome back. I would like to give a big thanks to IG Infinitely Galactic from Australia and Spatry from Spatry's Cup of Linux featuring my favorite F-word, Folgers. That's uh, just a little inside joke between uh, me and Spatry. But... <laughs> yeah. But seriously folks, no, I would seriously thank you to both uh, uh, Spatry's Cup of Linux and IG uh, for their participation in the following uh, Tosscasts uh, podcast that you are about to hear. Uh, this is my 11th, I believe, uh, TC uh, podcast, but my very first featuring us three was a lot of fun. It runs about uh, 40 minutes. I hope you will find it uh, informative. We had a lot of fun doing it. The audio quality somewhat varies he here and there, and, and there is a little bit of lag, but the, with some tweaking and some editing I think I got the um, volume and stuff like that up to par but thank you once again to Spatry's Cup of Linux and Infinitely Galactic and from yours truly Total OS Today I will catch you guys sometime in the future don't go away the podcast is coming up you are listening to another Tosscast podcast in a series of podcasts tonight we have a very special podcast for all of you listening out there i have myself total os today from the united states spatry or cup of linux spatry also from the united states and my good friend who is in the far far east per se in australia infinitely galactic and at this time, I would like to transfer the microphone to my good friend in Australia, IG. All right, so we're experimenting with a new sort of format here in that we've uh, we've invited in Spatry, and he's been very good to uh, help us get set up here inside the uh, Linux Distro community chat room. Um, but anyway, today we're just going to be talking about uh, the biggest news topics of, uh, of 2011, mostly relating to Linux, of course. Um, so obviously a lot of changes happened in the Linux uh, desktop community uh, in, the last, uh, in the last year. And, uh, and so we're just going to recap over the, over the ones that really grabbed the headlines and, uh, and just share our opinions on them. Also, if we have time, we're going to have a look at Arch because of the fact that both myself and Spatry uh, have, have recently uh, made a bit of a transition to Arch. So we'll, we'll see if there's, we'll see if we have time for that. But, uh, so I think I'll transfer the mic over to Spatry now and, uh, and he can introduce himself and, uh, and just talk a little bit more about what it is we're going to be doing today. Alright, here I am, and uh, wow, so many things has happened in 2011 in terms of uh, Linux and that sort of thing, and you know, early in 2011 is when I made my initial transition to Linux, and I have seen so much growth and that sort of thing, so I, I can see this is going to be an exciting topic, so you'll definitely want to stick around and listen in on this, and uh, I'm going to pass this over to Toss today. Thank you, Spatry. Well, I would like to get started with the uh, number five on the top five Linux stories for 2011. Now, number five on my list, the Linux desktop or the lack of a Linux desktop for 2011. Now, as I was browsing some of the old news articles, I think one website had Debian, uh, which I think, Spatry, you have looked at recently. I think just last night you uploaded a few uh, a, a few tutorials there. Thank you. Um, and I think another website had Linux Mint uh, 12 as the, um, or maybe it was 11, I can't remember, as the uh, Linux desktop for 2011. But um, I think what has happened here in the last 10 years, there really hasn't been the year of the of the Linux desktop uh, in spite of all the um, people out there or all the uh, news people trying to say, hey, this is the year of this or this is the year of that and maybe trying to pick a Linux distribution that will fit into the mold of a Linux desktop, um, <clears throat> Linux desktop, excuse me. Um, some like this, if somehow Google uh, can get their hands or consider a 
desktop, a Linux desktop, may be based on Android. That may be something to consider. But last year, uh, for me, I still enjoy using Zorin. In fact, I did an upload last night on Zorin 5.2. And currently, right now, that is, that is my choice for a Linux desktop. But once again, uh, 2011, in my opinion, we did not have a Linux desktop for the masses. How do you guys see it? Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, it's it's a really difficult, it was a really difficult year for a lot of people because there was GNOME 3, there was Unity, there was a lot of transition going on and, and people were kind of lost as to what it is they were going to be using on an everyday basis, uh, myself included, pretty much um, KDE and then all the, uh, all the smaller ones that, uh, that aren't exactly seen as that mainstream. Uh, such as, well, like Spatry is doing using Compiz as an independent window manager or using Openbox or using XFC, LXD. And I think there actually has been quite a transition to those uh, desktop environments, the ones that have a more traditional uh, a more traditional user experience. But, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, uh, Linux as itself doesn't really market it as, as one particular desktop that people can pin their hopes uh, on and say, you know, that's what I'm going to be running. Uh, and I mean, although Ubuntu has been trying to, um, to market it to the masses, it's very difficult to, to, to sort of tout a product that, that is changing as, as often as what Linux is. So, I mean, it's kind of, as I've said before, it's kind of like it's, 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 uh, it's its blessing and it's its bane in that, you know, it changes and improves well, okay, arguably improves depending on what type of user you are. But uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's an ever morphing world and it's very difficult to, uh, to you know, to pin, uh, to pin your expectations on one particular uh, Linux camp. So I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, Ubuntu obviously is still one of the distributions with the most resources. So it's going to, um, you know, it's going to be constantly pushing for the consumer market. But um, at the same time, you know, we've seen Linux Mint gain quite a bit of popularity in the last year uh, because of what Unity uh, has, has done to several disgruntled Ubuntu users. But yes, it's kind of difficult to pick a Linux desktop for 2011 and for, and for 2012 at this stage as well. It'd be interesting to see where things head in the future, but um, that's, that, that's how I see it. So it's kind, of hard to, it's kind of hard to give one definitive answer for that question. I would have to sh say that I subscribe to the view that Infinitely Galactic has just illustrated here because in two, 2011 we have seen so many uh, different changes uh, in the desktops. Ubuntu has, you know, uh, off offered its Unity interface. GNOME has obviously improved and of course we know that necessity is the mother of invention here you now we've seen that gnome has forked off into mate and then of course then we've seen uh, Linux Mint uh, make their own desktop called cinnamon which I might add is uh, pretty nice uh, you know, in my opinion. And uh, I switched to Linux early in 2011, and you know, it really was complicated. I absolutely love it. I thought it was amazing. And that sort of thing, you know, I like the eye candy, I like the special effects, and that really what got me into computers in the first place. But there is a Linux desktop for everyone out there, you know, and that that's a wonderful thing that there are so many choices. But to pin it down to one desktop for Linux, there is absolutely no way I could even, you know, uh, say which one is better than the other because it is up to the individual. I probably would have to agree if I may just uh, do just a little bit of mild uh, fortune telling. Uh, I think probably Linux Mint 13, if they can get it right with Cinnamon, and I think that may be their choice for their default desktop, that may be a candidate for a Linux desktop for the future. However, someone will want to describe it. But uh, I've always enjoyed uh, Linux Mint. And just for point of reference, right now I'm using, I'm using Zorin. Uh, <clears throat> Is Linux Mint 10, I believe, in one of my laptops, and, and I'm actually enjoying uh, in my newly acquired ThinkPad, a dual core, I'm enjoying running uh, Ubuntu 11.10 alongside uh, GNOME Shell, basically just logging in and out and choosing, you know, which environment I want to log into. into. And uh, 
I think one of the reasons why I like that so much is is that because it looks so much different than Windows 7. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying it's you know better or worse, but because it looks different than Windows 7, I find it really cool. But for uh, for the future, you know, it may not be that important, but I'm looking forward to what the, the developers at Linux Mint are going to do. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I think they're onto something with uh, with cinnamon and uh, and just you know even as a, even as just a, an extra anecdote here, um, I actually did um, help another user who doesn't have uh, much you know doesn't have much experience with computers at all. Uh, I just you know helped them install Linux on on their laptop and started them off with Ubuntu eleven ten. And um, yes, they, they, they kind of understood it, um, but at the same time, it, they didn't feel it completely at home. Uh, so then I you know, went over there and added uh, the PPA for Cinnamon and uh, logged them into that. And uh, you know, they're, they're much more comfortable in that just because it's so much more sort of you know, Windows XP-ish in its user experience. So they could be onto something there, the Mint team. And uh, I think their dedication to, to their community rather than their own sort of personal goals, I think is uh, something that, uh, that the community really values from the Linux Mint team. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Of further interest, uh, I have also shared Linux with a number of my friends, and mainly I was sharing Pingai OS 1104. I am a manager of a three-quarter living house or a sub house where we have public computers, and I recently transitioned all of them over to Pingai OS, and uh, I like it because of the fact that it does have a familiar uh, kind of look to it and uh, the people that are residing in this uh, recovery center have actually found that it was relatively easy to use and it's also nice because they can plug in their media players and so uh, having a good beginner's distribution uh, in the hands of these people was really good for them it's good for me because now I don't have to maintain those computers as often that is a very nice uh, story there, Spatry. Um, nice. Okay. Do you guys want to move on to uh, number four then on my list? Go ahead. Okay. Well, number four on my list uh, would be Unity. Oh, where do I begin with this? When this was first released, uh, my very first look look at unity as a windows linux dual booter was you know what this really doesn't look that bad but the impression i got last year i think it was last april a lot of folks in the linux community just did not like it um i i guess change is sometimes difficult uh, sometimes difficult to get used to something that is completely different than unity was and is completely different now i did a little versus video back then you know ubuntu 11.04 and windows 7 and uh i really liked unity back then i still use it um it's been stable both 11.04 and 11.10 but i'm not sure maybe because i've been so used to you know windows for so long when when something new comes along that's totally different i think perhaps there's that cool factor that right now you just don't get with windows 7 you know uh, i'm now with windows 8 coming out uh, sometime uh, i think the end of the month with we you know with the beta that may change things but for me when unity first came out and gnome shelf you know for that matter you know, I thought the community was a little bit harsh on both of the uh, on both Unity and Gnome Shell, but I like Unity. Uh, I don't think Unity is quite complete and polished yet. Uh, IG and I had talked about this. You know, sometimes maybe the six month release cycles are just a little bit too quick because software that worked in the past doesn't work now, and that can be very frustrating for anybody but that being said uh unity in my eyes it's not that bad is is it a replacement for gnome 2 well once all of your favorite software catches up and can work 
the way it should, I don't see a problem. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I think with Unity, uh, I mean, I had I had similar feelings when uh, when Ubuntu eleven oh four came out. Uh, it was it was something that was different, uh, and sure, it was something that, that took a little bit of getting used to. But I was kind of already heading towards the direction of, of launching everything via keyboard. So for me, Unity was actually quite a convenience in that everything, you know, I could just by default meta key typing what I want to do enter. So. Uh, you know, in my experience, Unity is, you know, it is something that has a lot of pizzazz to it and it does have, it does uh, make people, you know, interested in what you're using on your computer. And I have had people come up and, you know, saying, oh, wow, that looks nice. And I'll be able to say, this is this. And, you know, it's Ubuntu, you can download it free and all that kind of thing. And it is something that, you know, sparks a fair bit of interest. But um, at the same time, if it's something that you're going to be using on an everyday basis, I, d I didn't really have an issue with it. Um, obviously, it, you don't have uh, as much control as per yet as what you could have slash should have. Um, and I think, you know, it can definitely do with some, uh, you know, more features, more customization abilities. But, you know, for considering how young the product itself is, uh, it, you know, it presents some very efficient uh, and some very time-saving, uh, you know, workflows. So I think, you know, for what it's worth, Unity is, is you know, quite adaptable to different situations. And, uh, you know, now, uh, especially with the announcing, announcement of Ubuntu for TVs, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, what Ubuntu is capable of doing with its Unity interface because it is such a, a kind of a fresh new paradigm of, uh, uh, you know, of the way that you work on a computer. But I think it is efficient. And uh, But for those who were uh, traditional and not that um, adaptable in, in their workflow, they already had a solid way that they wanted to use their computer. Uh, it was difficult. But uh, for me, I, I, I didn't mind it at all. One, say, one thing that I'll say about Unity is it is very attractive and on uh, doing some searching in the uh, web update and the oh my god Ubuntu websites and that sort of thing you know there are some really neat tweaks that you can do with this to make it uh, to make it even more usable personally I didn't really care for the unity interface myself but the thing is there are a lot of people that are getting good use out of it yeah, I continue to use Unity. Um, I didn't think it got a, a fair shake when it was first released. Uh, now, I understand there may be some folks out there who just don't like it, and that's fine. It's like we talked about before. One of the one of the things that's nice about Linux is that you have lots of choices, but uh, I don't have a problem using Unity. It's not my first choice. Really, right now, my first choice would be what I have on my desktop here, which is Zorin. But I do not mind using Unity one bit. Uh, let's see. Shall we move on to number three story? Absolutely. OK. All righty. Well, let's see. Number three uh, story or news item on my list for 2011. Well. GNOME 3. Um, the GNOME 3 or GNOME Shell, I think this was released right after, if I'm not mistaken. I remember the first time I did a video on this, I think my description was slick, but not yet stable or not yet polished. Uh, I think it's become a little bit more slick, um, a little bit more polished. It's nice that they have added a few more customization tweaks, you know, with the extensions. Um, I must say this, um, downstairs I have my desktop, upstairs in my bedroom I have my ThinkPad and sometimes, I, you know, at night just before I go to bed just to relax I will check the news and check the forums. And quite frankly, I use GNOME Shell exclusively. I don't even boot into Windows or Unity. Right now, GNOME 3 has got my attention because it is stable, at least for me. Um, it is a dual core uh, system with three gigabyte of RAM, so all the 3D effects work. Um, I wish it had a little bit more customization, like right clicking on a panel and you know, and to add an applet, you know, or, or, you know, or something like that. It's, it's, you know, it's not quite there yet in terms of, um, user friendliness. Navigation is not an issue. It's, well, I think it's in fact very easy, but they could, 
the the developers could move a little bit faster in terms of customization but on my one thinkpad i don't even look at, at windows 7 or look at unity exclusively gnome shell it runs fine it's stable uh the really only big issue we had talked about this before is uh, screencasting software in general in linux is really up to par uh up to par as it is in windows but of course, using the the, uh, the the command line on the terminal is fine. Um, other than that, and the customization issues, I thoroughly enjoy using GNOME Shell. Yeah, GNOME Shell is uh, you know was uh, was a long time coming. They uh, they developed it for a long, long time. So when it came out, it did have a lot of uh, sort of it did have a real fresh feel about it. And uh, again, new user paradigms. Uh, new ways of doing things. It really, really ticked some people off. But, uh, I, you know, again, uh, being sort of fairly keyboard uh, driven in, uh, in my workflow, it wasn't that it wasn't that bad for me. Um, and it wasn't really until, uh, like you said, Toss today, where the where the extensions came along and you had a bit more customization that I actually started using it. I first played around with it in Fedora 15. That, I think that was the first distribution that, that officially supported it and uh, and I liked it and I thought it was slick but it just didn't have I felt like I was uh, kind of being locked out of my own system because I couldn't really uh, change too many aspects of it nowadays you've got a lot of extensions you've got a lot of themes you can tweak it to what to, to make it look the way you like it and actually as of right now that's um, that's what I'm using I'm using gnome shell uh, with like a with like an ice cream sandwich theme uh, on it, and it looks terrific. And uh, and I've got a lot of uh, different extensions here just to you know tweak it just the way I like it. Um, all of the, all of the notifications show up up in the top panel from GNOME 3 and GNOME 2 distribution uh, uh, as far as applications are concerned. Uh, so it works you know almost exactly the way I want it to, and I think it looks very slick. It looks very modern. Um, and I mean that's that's what I'm using at the moment. It takes the same customization, uh, it, like it, uh, the, the gnome sort of philosophy of changing it uh, and being able to add stuff to it, take stuff out of it. Uh, it's kind of starting to add that back in now into gnome three. We definitely had that in gnome two, and uh, definitely to more extent than what we have in gnome three at the moment. But it's getting there, and uh, and I definitely appreciate the, the work that the gnome guys do because if it weren't for uh, if it weren't for the work that these guys do, then none of the distributions that that are big today, Linux, Mint, uh, Ubuntu, they wouldn't exist. So I think uh, you know I admire what the what the GNOME team uh, have done, and they really did you know wait until GNOME three was was pretty much ready to ship in its default uh, settings, and it was uh, it was quite stable uh, as long as you didn't play around with it too much. Now the customizations here, are, I found it to be you know quite useful. You have taken the words right out of my mouth. Uh, everything that I could say about GNOME 3 has already been said. Uh, I didn't like it at first when I initially tried it, but it has grown on me. And yes, I would like to see customizations added where you can right-click on the panel. I think that was one disappointment for me because I was so used to right-clicking on the panels and adding my own applets and that sort of thing. But now you can visit a website and just click to add uh, new functionality to this. It's very nice. It is shaping up. And and uh, I can see a lot of potential for this. Well, it appears we have a consensus on uh, GNOME 3 between a Windows dual booter and two uh, Linux users. How does that sound? Not bad. I think they're onto something. Wonderful. It still needs, still needs work, but the thing is, they're heading in the right direction. Okay, I would totally agree on that. All right, let's uh, let's see. Let's move into uh, number two on my uh, list here. Well, Linux Mint 12. Um, I've always liked Linux Mint. It's always been one of the more user-friendly distros out there, especially for Windows users. Uh, I don't have. I tested Linux Mint several times. Um, I liked most of what I saw, but it appears that Linux Mint may be suffering a little bit of an identity crisis. Does it want to be a Cinnamon desktop? You know, you have Mate, MGSE, GNOME Shell. Um, I would love to be in the developer's uh, office, you know, with Linux Mint, 
uh, just talking about this, you know, talking about all the options and trying to figure out where to take Linux Mint. But um, yeah, I'm curious to see where Linux Mint 13 goes. Uh, it appears they have uh, they have focused on on cinnamon, and uh, that may be the way to go. Uh, I still prefer the Mint menu, but I think. Uh, Linux Mint with Cinnamon, that's probably going to be the way to go. How do you guys see it? Well, Spatry, do you want to take the lead on this one? Absolutely. I'll tell you, um, I made my switch to Linux in early 2011, and Linux Mint was the first distribution I tried. And this was because of a recommendation I saw on the Oz Gooley Tech Show. And uh, I went, this was a version and the one thing that really amazed me was the fact that everything worked right out of the box and I had never in my lifetime seen a Linux distribution do that before. Now obviously it has been, it was using uh, GNOME 2 and uh, I liked how easy it was to use. Uh, it was very configurable and that sort of thing. But I have also today every, every Mint version up to and even the KD version that was just released the day before yesterday. And I like the direction that Mint is going. I mean, they actually they have a very good, solid product here. And it is attractive to people. Even with the new Cinnamon desktop that they've come out with, yes, it's new. It could use a little bit more work. But they're going in a wonderful direction with this. And I cannot sing Mint enough praises. Yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, uh, Mint has really grown uh, a quite like a, a quite a dedicated community behind it, and just you know by poking around in their forums on their community website and everything, you can see that they're trying to cater for as many of their users as possible. They don't want to they don't want to leave anyone out of the dark, out in the dark. Um, you know, you can see their user base uh, on two graphs on their community website, and you can see they've actually got a really diverse uh, user base as far as who's using what release. There's still an equal amount, really, between their long-term support release, Linux Mint 11 and Linux Mint 12. They're almost an equal amount. So uh, they're supporting a lot of users and they're supporting a lot of desktop environments. They've also got their Linux Mint Debian edition. Uh, and, and like you said, Toss, today, they've got uh, Mint Gnome Shell extensions. They have Mate. They have Cinnamon. Um, so I think at the end, I think once Cinnamon is mature enough, I, I'm guessing that's where they're going to go because it is homegrown, uh, because they do have control over it, and uh, and because uh, just like everything else now, uh, Cinnamon just uses GNOME 3 as as the back end for it, uh, and they do have their own fork of the desktop effects as well. Uh, so I, I mean, I I can see that if they have something that they have total control over, that's what they're going to use. Um, but I think I think it's definitely a fair uh, a fair substitute I think for what the Linux Mint uh, experience used to provide. So I'd give it another six months, and uh, and I reckon that the Cinnamon desktop is is going to be the default choice, and it's going to be the one that people look to when they look at Linux Mint. It's going to be its own unique product. It's set apart from you know your GNOME Shell, your Unity, uh, and KDE, and all the others. It's a it's a specific Mint experience that uh, you know that they pioneered over the last couple of years has grown a user base around and now they're just going to have to continue to support it uh, and sort of bring that experience into you know the future technology that we have available for us today yeah I uh, I'm looking forward to what Linux Mint has in store um, I'm not sure about this six month release cycle uh, I would prefer um, they release when ready versus then than releasing when they're on their own schedule. Uh, you know, I prefer a system as as bug free as possible. And uh, you know, what's 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 kind of funny, uh, Spatry, Last night we had talked about the little joke about the Star Trek. Uh, you know, the uh, the uh, Star Trek transporter. And I wish it was like a little magic button that we could press to transport all the bugs out of Linux and maybe send them over to Microsoft. That way I would have a perfect Linux desktop. But you have to understand something, and I'm not really bashing on Microsoft or anything like that, really. But the fact of the matter is, anytime they release a new operating system, it doesn't have all the bugs wrong out of it either. I mean, come on, you have to download updates every time you install a new installment. 
So is it really any different than what Linux is offering right now? I think at the end of the day, um, uh, with, with a lot of Microsoft releases, because of the fact they only release them every uh, couple of years, every three years, the equivalent of that in the Linux world is, is probably looking at uh, an Ubuntu long-term support release. Uh, whereas comparatively, you know, releasing an operating system every six months, uh, you know, and, and the way that the Linux community kind of is constantly changing and evolving, um, you know, there obviously are more bugs, but they get fixed a lot quicker and a lot more often than the, than the bugs that come in Microsoft. For instance, if you just have a, a piece of, of software that Microsoft develops, uh, like, say, for instance, um, one of the Windows Live essentials, like the photo gallery or the movie maker or something, if you come across a bug in that, um, uh, you're probably not going to see it fixed for a number of months, uh, where, whereas in Linux, especially uh, in the more uh, bleeding edge ones like Arch and rolling releases like Debian, uh, you are going to see bugs, you know, fixed and discovered uh, quicker either way. So I think uh, for people that want a bug as bug free system as possible, use uh, older releases, long term support releases, and things like that. And that's generally what they do in the enterprise arena, where stability really counts. Um, but yeah, like you said, bugs are going to exist, and, uh, and it's just a matter of how quick the developers can get onto them. Okay, sounds good. Shall we move on to my number one story? Go from IG. Okay, well, uh, my number one story, my number one pick for the top Linux story of 2011. What can I say? Android explosion. Uh, you, you guys remember when the... Um, what was it? The HP Touchpad. They had a an extremely good sale for like ninety nine dollars, and it and it had a Web OS and not Android, and it sold out. I I can imagine now the potential for for any Android type of product, you know, for the masses. Of course, the uh, tablets are are selling, have sold, and are selling well. Smartphones. And, uh, you know, and I can just imagine if Google would decide to, uh, you know, to build and market an Android OS desktop, how far they can take that. But not to drag this last topic on, but for me, hands down, the number one story, Linux story for 2011 is the explosion of Android devices. Android has definitely grown a huge amount in the last year, and I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, just in, even you know, in this last year, I have uh, I've seen just in the, my immediate circle of uh, of contacts uh, probably a growth of about ten to twelve Android devices just this year. So, and prior to that, um, none of us in, in in our circle had Android devices. I personally own two of them. Um, and I mean, people are going to debate about uh, Android being Linux. I mean, of course, it, it uses the Linux kernel, but some people have the feeling that uh, that Google just, you know, is using the Linux technology, which is fantastic, and then uh, bring in their own, you know, Google experience, which people question uh, on top of that. But Regardless, Android has become a huge powerhouse, and I think uh, if if Google was to port that to the desktop, and in a sense they kind of are, because you can get tablets which you know obviously bolt onto keyboards with with touchpads and everything like that. So it's it's getting dangerously close to that. Um, I mean, my only my only qualm then is that you've got pretty much every device that you use if you were to choose to you know get an Android. Um, desktop or, uh, or an Android laptop or whatever, every device that you use would be, you know, synchronized with, with Google servers and, you know, they would practically own your computing experience, which obviously it would make for a very coherent and easy one, very synchronized and very connected. But at the same time, you know, yeah, there's, there's always going to be privacy issues and things like that about how much information Google can hold. But regardless, Android has been a, a huge uh, explosion in the last year, uh, and uh, and I think you know it's it's certainly not going away anytime soon. Uh, in the tablet space, uh, obviously Apple with its iPad 2 uh, is still you know definitely at the top at the top of the food chain. But um, but I think with um, with ice cream sandwich uh, with Android 4.0 coming around the corner, uh, we'll see you know a myriad of new devices with a lot more computing power in them and uh, you know better battery life. Just better technology in general, and uh, and the battle will be on once again. So interesting to see where it goes. Um, and I'm, you know, I've definitely uh, grown very fond of Android in in the last couple of months. 
allow me to throw a little wrench into this machine if I may. Now I have an Android device myself. I absolutely love it and I like the direction that Android is going in. My only fear is if they port this to the desktop, is it going to be just as difficult to root this device? Uh, or to, rev to, to, to actually be able to have full control of my Android system, you know, or am I going to have to jump through hoops and that sort of thing? Because, you know, th there's a lot of features that you can add by having root access, and I don't know if they're going to actually allow, allow that to to happen. Uh, I love Android. It's amazing, um, especially for my uh, cell phone. If I compare it to my uh, Windows smartphone that I had before purchasing uh, the Android, I used to have to reboot that device times a day. And my Android device, I mean, it just, it you know, it just keeps running and running and running. I very, very rarely ever have to reboot the device. And I mean, so Android is using a good technology, and that's the Linux kernel. I mean, uh, and everybody knows that the Linux kernel is a proven technology. It does, it does the job. It is a brick, and it'll keep running until you have hardware failure. Yeah, that's right. I was going to throw in the same point about the root access thing. Uh, I mean, just as an example, on my tablet, uh, I'm running an, uh, Android Honeycomb 3.1. Uh, 3.2 is the most recent release, and I can update to it, but the problem is there is no way to root Android 3.2 uh, for my particular tablet, so I have to stay with 3.1 because uh, I need the root for you know different things, including uh, plugging in external, um, external NTFS hard drives, being able to mount them, being able to access them, all those fun things that really turn it into a really powerful device, especially when you compare it to the super lockdown iPad, uh, and it really turns it into like a, a mini computer as opposed to, you know, a toy that is that is fun and it's useful, but a toy. So, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, if, if, if Android was... It's almost become, as though they have, they have... Yeah, keep going. It's almost as though as they have, uh, you know, kind of down operating system taking control out of the user's hands and uh, you know power users like myself you know we really have full control over the hardware that we spend our hard money for yes that's right uh, my feeling is with the amount of uh, resources that Google has if they were to come out with an Android desktop in theory with the amount of resources they, that they have, I don't think they would have a problem in, in trying to figure out all of the technicalities of making a mass market Android desktop. I will mention that they did kind of try and fail, epically fail, with uh, with their Chrome OS, which was, of course, just a web browser uh, locked into hardware. Um, and obviously, that was just a, a cloud computing experiment that never really got off the ground. Um, but again, Android is a completely different beast in that it does have a large myriad of apps, and uh, it does have you know already a huge user base. Uh, so I think you know, with with especially with the direction that Android is going as far as supporting uh, higher resolution screens, uh, especially the the very high definition screens that are going to be coming to tablets very soon, uh, I don't see it's going to be that hard for them to to. Make Make some sort of uh, computer, but unless uh, unless power users like us can you know can get root access on it or install whatever we like on the hardware, um, I don't really see myself uh, being a fan of it at this stage anyway. And we're, this is all hypothetical because at this point it doesn't even exist. Well, I concur. If the if the Google tablet. Uh, takes off and it works the way it should. Who knows? Maybe the desktop is next. So, okay. Does anybody else have anything to add? No, I think we're good here. Okay, I am looking at the time, uh, gentlemen. I don't think we will have time this evening to talk about Arch. Perhaps we can save that for a future discussion. Is that okay with you guys? That's just fine here. That works for me. Okay, uh, at this time, I would like to thank both Spatry and Infinitely Galactic for this very informative discussion on this edition of the Tosscast's 
podcast. If you are、uh, listening to this for the very first time, please check out、uh, Spatry's channel here on YouTube, and also the Infinitely Galactic channel.、Uh, arguably,、uh, three of the very best channels on YouTube. If I may be allowed to toot our horns,、uh, for those of you who were、um, who were able to to、uh, stay awake, <laughs> thank you. And signing off from America is, or from this part of America, is Total OS Today. And I shall sign out from my corner of the globe as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me on the show. And、uh, yes, it'll be interesting to see、uh, where where the、uh, what what we'll be talking about in one year's time for the top news stories of 2012. Exactly, and I thought this discussion was invigorating. Thank you, Toss, today, and thank you, Infinitely Galactic, for having me as a guest on your show. I look forward to having more discussions with you in the near future. And、uh, to my subscribers, definitely check out Infinitely Galactic. And toss today's show. You will find that I have a link on my channel that will easily take you to there, so that you can see all the wonderful content that they have out there. And、uh, thanks for sticking around and listening. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you all who took the time out of your evening to listen to this discussion. Catch you guys in the future. Bye.